Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to be going over the five points of Calvinism. Before we get into Calvinism, I think it's good that we look at the opposite school of soteriology, and that is called Arminianism. After the theologian John Calvin, there was a theologian by the name of Jacobus Arminius. This Jacobus Arminius studied with John Calvin's successor, Theodore Beza. While he was in Geneva studying with Theodore Beza, he never expressed any doubts about Calvinism or Reformed theology at the time. After he left Geneva and became a pastor in the Netherlands, he started having doubts about Reformed theology. When Arminius becomes a professor, he starts to look deeper into these issues. After Arminius died, there was a group of people that decided to take on this form of theology called the Remonstrance Group. This Remonstrance Group, known as the Arminians, offered five challenges to what we know today as Calvinism. These five challenges to Calvinism were what brought about the five points of Calvinism, known as the TULIP. So, what were the five problems that the Arminians had with the Calvinist doctrine? This brings us to the T in TULIP, which is total depravity. The Calvinist believes that as a result of the fall, man is dead in his sin and unable to come to God without the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit. Romans 3, 10 through 11 says, as it is written, none is righteous, no not one, no one understands, no one seeks for God. Ephesians 2.5 says, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. We collect from these two verses that no one seeks after God and we were dead in our sin until God made us alive together with Christ. The Arminian believes that in our fallen state, we all have the capacity to either choose God or reject God. There are a multitude of verses which say otherwise, and we'll be looking at these verses a lot more in the next video. The next letter of the tulip is the U, and that stands for unconditional election. Unconditional election means that God chose who we would save before the foundation of the world, and it wasn't based on anything about them, but according to his good pleasure. If we go to Ephesians 1, 4 through 5, it says, Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. The Arminian would say that God looked through the corridors of time and saw who would believe and then went back and chose them. If this is the case, then it's actually based on man's decision and not God's election, which we know is not true from reading the scriptures. The next letter of the tulip is the L, and that stands for limited atonement. Limited atonement says that Jesus came and died only for the sins of those who were chosen by the Father before the foundation of the world. Matthew 1, 21 says, she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. We see here that Jesus will save his people from their sins. It doesn't say everybody. The Arminian would say that Jesus paid for the sins of all, everybody, who ever lived. But that's not what we read in the scriptures. We are now brought to the I in the tulip, which is irresistible grace. Irresistible grace says that all whom God has elected will be saved because it's not based on man, but it's based on God, and God does all that he pleases. John 6.37 says, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. All that were chosen before the foundations of the world in Christ, and Christ came to die for, will be saved. The Arminian response is that we can either come to God on our own or reject God. The choice is on us since we have the freedom to choose. Finally, this brings us to the P, which is the perseverance of the saints. The perseverance of the saints says that all that God has chosen before the foundation of the world, that the Son came and died for, and has believed and been saved, can never lose their salvation, but they will persevere until the end. John 10:28 says, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, 
and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Those whom Jesus has given eternal life are sealed with the Holy Spirit and will never perish. No one can take that from them, not even them. The Arminian would say that people can lose their salvation if they fall from grace and stop believing. When we're saved, we're given eternal life, which means forever. How could you lose forever? These are the five points of Calvinism backed by scripture with the Arminian objections. I hope you have found this video useful, and if you have, please like and subscribe to support my channel. In the next video, we will be talking about total depravity more specifically. Thank you.